Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Office Blow Daz. I'm Gaynor. I'm Office Blow Caden. I'm Sophie. Okay, this is another video I've actually seen. Oh. Mm. But <laughs> what I want to do, I want to bring some of these videos that I've already seen, uh, which we've done with the Office Blokes. Um, if you're not subscribed over there, go to the Office Blokes Reacts and uh, see what we're doing over there. Um, but these are some of the, the sporting stuff that I want to uh, show you guys what, what it's all about in sport in the USA. Uh, this is, I know Aiden and I have touched on a few of the college uh, sports. Sophie and Gaynor, what I wanted you to see from was a perspective of, um, I know, Gaynor, I know you go quite a lot of sports. Sophie, you're not really into sport, are you? Not really, no. But no, I want you to but... see what kind of facilities are available for the college teams over in the USA. Mm -hmm. um, so this is uh, inside the Alabama Crimson Tide's 37,000 square foot football facility. <laughs> Just uh, for college, yeah. But uh, you're going to see it. So Alabama Crimson Tide, uh, uh, they have a big war cry called Roll Tide, uh, which they all bang on about. Uh, one of the better teams for college football, probably uh, one of the most successful teams. I'm not sure which is the most successful, but I'm sure it's one of the most successful teams. Who were the ones we seen when we stayed at that hotel? It was, Flor it was some, some Florida teams, weren't they? They were orange, weren't they? It was the Orange Bowl. Oh, it was the Orange Bowl, yeah. yeah. But I think it was a Florida One of them was definitely a Florida team because they got in the elevator with us and yeah, were talking to some of them. Lads. Yeah. But um, I don't know, I can't remember which. I wasn't really into college football then, so I wouldn't really yeah, pay much attention, attention to which, state, which uh, teams they were from. But they were playing in the Orange Bowl. But anyway, this is inside. Alabama Crimson Tide's 37,000 square foot football facility. Go for it, Ace. What's going on, world? Brand new episode of Royal Key there on your screen. I'm your host, George Kill, and I'm in Bama with Kyle Smith, the director of football equipment at Alabama. What's going on, Kyle? How are you, How you doing, man? Good to have you all here. Yeah, good to have you as well. Now, before we get fitted in that good crimson oh, yeah. gear, tell me about this spacious locker room that you guys are in right now. Yeah, so this is our players' practice locker room. We only use this locker room for practice. Our stadium's on the other side of campus. We got 136 lockers in here. Each locker has, you know, ample space for what they need. Now, Kyle, people always tell me I have an accent. I'm from Texas, but I'm here in that Bama. Oh yeah, it's the lifelong <laughs> Bama resident right here. So each one of our lockers, exactly the same. Got the name plate at the top. When it has a player in it, have the player's name and locker number in it. Compartment for the shoulder pads with a vent up there to keep them dry. Get them dry after every practice in the hot Alabama sun. Another drawer for personal storage. And then we have a lot box here where they can put their cell phones, wallets, has charging outlets in there. And then another drawer at the bottom for cleats and whatever else they want to put in there. Also, a cool feature of the locker room, we have a hot tub, cold tub back there with a waterfall so they don't have to go to the training room to yeah. get treatment. They Definitely. can do cold tub after practice in here, hot tub before practice to get loose, and a TV in each section so each section can watch TV. And I'm noticing here that they have that old classic wooden finish um, to the entire facility. Describe that. Is, is that a theme of, of just Alabama itself? Yeah, you know, we're a very classic team. It's traditional. You know, we like to bring in the old school tradition with the new. All right, Kyle, I'm your recruit today, man. So so where do we start? All right, man, so we got to get you fit. We got to okay. get your uniform ready. So uh, I say you look like a DB running back, All a little right. bit of that type of build. So what size waist do you wear? I don't know, 34. Okay, so most people actually go down because they like their pants tight, like okay. them fit good. Jersey running backs you know we usually put you like in a 38 or something so we'll grab you a 38 out of here in a little bit have to send it down to the seamstress to get your name and number okay. put on there but as you can see you know this is just our uniform aisle we have 14 students do a great job for us we have one student his response he's not a player guy. he's just a, what's it the, uh, the the reporter no I know but when you look at him he looks like a big guy yeah. but you mm. must be quite small because yeah, quite, quite lean isn't he yeah but you look at the, you look at the straight off the facilities there, just in that little locker room which yeah. they've got. Mm. I mean, you know, the hot and cold tubs and all that kind of stuff. Looks like a five star hotel, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a spa. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So no. you, you look at the, the the effort that goes in to make these the best players possible. Yeah. To give them everything they need. All you've got to do is bring your game to the table. Yeah. Mm. Don't worry about anything. Everything else is laid up on a plate for you. Yeah. Don't high. This is high level. Yeah. Do they get they? paid? No, no. Do no. They, do they I think it's like changed. Scholarship? People let us know in the comments, but I think it's changed into the um, over recent times where they can get like money for like image rights and stuff like that. So it goes. They don't. They don't pay for college. Though. I think it's all. Do they have like nutrition? Yeah, scholarship. Let's see. Possibility is all uniforms all week long. Wow. And he does an incredible job. You now we're traditional. You know, we say yeah. our alternate yeah. is our white uniform. How is it working with Nike? Oh, they're great, man. Great. They're a great partner with us. We go out there every May. You know, they're very open to what we have to say, and they're an absolute great partner for us and do a yeah. great job. And we love wearing that swoosh on our uniform every Saturday. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. It was sponsored by Nike. They're not sponsored by Nike. Nike's the manufacturer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the what, kit yeah. manufacturer. Yeah. I'm not sure the kit manufacturers for every team in, in college football, because I think in the NFL, um, I'm not sure if it's Nike, but in the college, in the NFL, all uniforms are made by the same manufacturer, I believe. 
Oh, really? And I think it might be Nike. Let us know in the comments. Mm -hmm. But I think it's it's oh, like the, Nike them, the yeah. MLS. The ML, the MLS is the same. It's um, all Adidas. All the uniforms. I don't think they still are. They were all Adidas. Do you remember when um, we got that New York City football shirt? I forgot it. Yeah, that you'll know it's that's Adidas. But all yeah, cities at the time were all Nike. Mm. And now we're all Puma. But that's still in the MLS. Will still be Adidas. Because mm. it, it, it's it's governed by the MLS. I didn't know that. Mm. Okay, so I have my jersey, get I have my pants. pants. I need to get some gloves, some man. Gloves. Let's go get some gloves. Here's our white Nike Super Bads. These are actually the ones we wore in the uh, national championship game last year. I mentioned Nike earlier. One guy that was here over the summer, Kobe Bryant, mm -hmm. also a Nike guy. How was that experience for the players? It was awesome to get Kobe in here. He was great with our guys. You know, really enjoyed meeting him. He actually came in the equipment room and got to meet him. Yeah. I mean, one of the greatest athletes of all time. So great to have him here. Awesome, awesome. So I'm gonna go put this on. Kyle, I'm more of a basketball guy. Man, so. you look like you're ready to go, man. All right, so this is our cleat room. It's probably our player's favorite room in the whole building. So they come in here and get their cleats every day. But we got a new addition to our cleat room this year. This is our foot scanner, okay? We're the only Division One football program that has this right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get you sized for the exact cleat that you need to be wearing so we can do the best to keep you on the field as long as possible. So go ahead, right. what you're gonna do is you can put your right foot on that glass platform and your left foot inside there. All right. There you go, right there. Measures arch length, measures the actual size of their foot. So the players have been a big fan of it this year. So get a full measurement of your foot right here. Do me a favor, switch feet, right foot in now. I'm sure my foot compared to the Giants, you guys, it's gonna be pretty small. <laughs> Here's a whole scan of your foot, so you can see. Wow. Even got your socks in there, that's how precise this thing is. <laughs> now we're gonna measure your arch, so you're gonna walk across that black platform over there. Just walk back and forth until I tell you to stop. And here comes your exact measurements. Your left foot's a little bit shorter than your right. Hmm. And so a lot of people don't realize that, so this is a really good tool we can use to help do this. And then the coolest part is it gives us shoe recommendations. So we hit recommendations and it shows exactly what you should be wearing. Alpha Pro 2, three quarter, we got. You should do that with oh, high man. heels. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Yeah, they should. You yeah, should be doing, the what they should be doing that with kids at school. Yeah. Yeah. So when kids wear the first shoes, that's yeah. what they should be doing. When you doing. go to Clark's yeah. Yeah. and get your feet measured. Yeah, do all that. <laughs> go walk through all that and that's the shoe you need for you for, to walk yeah. perfect yeah, for the rest of your life. Yeah, I think you can get that machine just in the... <laughs> no, I've, I've, that, I've done that though in um, the US. I went to ASICS to get running shoes and they did a, a whole thing where I had to walk on like a treadmill and it measured yeah. me, me mm -hmm. like arch really. and all that it's sort like of stuff. It's like a science, isn't it? But that's, that's just like bringing someone to the table there. That's, you know, can you imagine you're in college, you're playing for the college team you got walk into the boot room like that, the cleat room, whatever they call it. You've got every probably every pair of cleats you can think yeah. of by Nike, and you have got your choice of you know no I don't want that style. I want this. What style, if you're more of an Adidas kind of guy? Well, you got Nike and that's it. <laughs> choose, choose Nike or bring your own. Tough. Yeah. <laughs> At that and if it's something that we don't have it's an older model we can try our best to get that for our team we're gonna give you these fresh pair of our smu free trainer school makeup shoe with the uh, alabama say, a on the shoe you know nike does a great job making these for us every year we got a little hound's tooth on the inside for you we'll let you walk around and go to class and these this kind of things oh, and uh, okay. then uh, my man jeff's gonna take you upstairs and show you all the hardware we got Alabama tradition you don't have thousands of different jerseys why is it coach Saban brought this up a couple years ago when the the craze in college football was uh, changing uniforms changing helmets the history of the program here at Alabama Alabama has built a very strong brand we are traditional but that's our brand and that's what we're known for mm -hmm. so when you turn a, a game on on a Saturday and you see that crimson helmet with the white stripe and the white numbers on the side that's Alabama. That's good to have a strong brand like that. It's a strong brand of winning and the look that has held the test of time. Right, right. Now you guys had one special jersey, one one-off jersey, if you will. What went into that and, and give me the inspiration of that jersey? Well, that, that jersey was from the Mississippi State game in 2010. The first concept design was a lot different than what they ended up with. It was uh, a lot of going back and forth with Nike, the administration here at Alabama, Coach Saban. What they had decided on was something very subtle. Right, it's right. got a slight hound's tooth design in the number. It's got the shield in the neck and there was an American flag patch on the sleeve. Now, equipment managing wise, you have a great routine. You get here in the morning, you leave late, long days. When it comes to the regular season, you know your locker room, you know your opponent's locker room in the SEC, but what changes when you go deep into that national championship run, when you're in locations that you're usually not used to, 
A couple of different things change on it. One is the length of time. For a bowl game, you're there seven days, possibly eight. When you move, you're moving for an extended amount of time and you're taking the whole team. SEC travel rules during the regular season, you get 70 players. For the bowl game, you can bring everybody. So we have 130 players during the season. So you're almost doubling the amount of players that you're taking. You're tripling the length of time that you're staying. So there's a lot more that we've got to pack that we have to make sure that we have. We have to bring practice. Grip on the ball. Grip on no. the ball. Yeah, but rugby, they don't wear gloves. They're not throwing, you're not, they're not not throwing, throwing the ball. Yeah, you're not, not throwing the ball like that. Like you're throwing it what you would NFL. It's very, two very different games with ball handling. And, and in NFL, you throw it with like one arm, really. Like one the, arm. the quarterback, you hold it with two hands. The quarterback generally won't wear gloves. You'll probably see a quarterback with bare hands. Um, the do, receivers, do, aren't their gloves sticky as well? The receiver, well, that's... <laughs> Do you remember, remember when I used to play? Yeah. And they used to say, we put, they used to, the quarterback used to throw it at me, and I wasn't used to playing this game. This was all new to me. So I think they used to throw it, and they used to bounce out my hands, and the guy says, get some, go to the shop and buy some stickum. And you rolled it on your glove, and it made your gloves sticky. Mm. So when you threw the ball, the ball sort of like stuck into my gloves a little bit, sort of thing. Can they use that? Although I was the kicker. But what they did, I was the fastest on the, believe it or not, I was the fastest runner on the team, so they wanted to use me as a, a receiver. Yeah. But I'd never played the game before, so I had no idea. I just turned up because I wanted to play sport. Mm. And uh, but ended up being a kicker, but um, it's you're not allowed to use it now. It's, it's oh. I think it's been a. I've seen some catches in like NFL and stuff, and like, you just think you just think <laughs> there must be some yeah. glue on their yeah. hands or yeah. something. The way yeah. they just put their hand up and then it just yeah. the ball's just there yeah. and it sticks to their hand. Yeah. It's like it's, I guess it's the motion that brings it down, but it does help with the catching of the, the, the impact of the ball coming to your hand. Also, I want to say, you know, do, do you reckon they put so much money in like like fans are probably so passionate with like Alabama because they don't have a team in the NFL. Possibly, um, a lot of a lot of the. Uh, I don't think they do. When you get when you get teams like in Alabama, uh, I don't think there is an NFL team in Alabama. No, is I there? can't think of one. Uh, there's quite a few states where there's no NFL team. Yeah. Um, but what you get is a lot of people sort of like put effort. You get a lot of people who've been to the college before, um, or the university before, where they donate money to the, to or the state supports it. Mm. So they get a lot of donations and they get a lot of state support. So that's why they've got you know. But plus they've got the attendances that go in there. You look at these crowds, they're getting like 100,000 plus. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Which we've seen on some of the videos. But they are state sponsored and they are, uh, they get a lot of private investment that goes into them for donations. And, mm-hmm. and if you think about it as well, if they're having to buy tickets every game, you're getting 100,000 people to the game. That's, that's a lot of money. And then if you're not even having to pay the players. Yeah. I'm sure I read somewhere though that if you attended the school, mm. you got free tickets. Not necessarily free. I think some people get free, but it gets included in your tuition. Um, but I think I mean what you got to remember is I, mean, I don't know how many games they play in college. Uh, college, let us know in the comments how many games. But imagine at home you'd probably only play. What would you play? Nine games maybe. You have to keep up with your studies Nine or as ten. well, though, don't you? Max ten. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think the, the prime reason they're going there is to play football game. So do they? You know? I know, but what I'm saying is, if you're a, an absolutely brilliant football player, but you 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 crap at your grades. Your academics, yeah. Then they don't let you play. No, I don't know. No, not, I don't not over think... here. They, over here, they don't. I know that over here. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think if you've got, you know, uh, Burrow, for example, it's, from just, LSU, such a, it's just such a waste. Though, isn't it, he's probably one of the best quarterbacks, you know, in, in the game. And if it's he's in, a, it's in, to encourage you to to have an education after. Yeah. You've got mm. something to do when yeah, you're you, you if you're going yeah. to like play American football, he's been bashed that many times. It's probably going to be a muff bit after. I don't know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I saw someone on, online say. Or they should have like the yeah, the Super Bowl should be seven games like basketball and stuff. No, but Jesus yeah. Christ! You'd burn out. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You'd be retiring at twenty two. You'd be walking with a limp for a few months afterwards, wouldn't That's you? That's what I mean. Practice yeah. pads, clocks, backups of just about everything, and everything you have to have for the game at the end of the week. And usually for postseason. That's it for most people. For the two teams who win the semifinal game and go into the national championship, you've got to hurry up, turn it around, and you're playing in the biggest game of the season. Yeah. And you're playing for a championship and everything that goes into that. So you've got to load everything back up, which is usually two 18-wheelers instead of one for a regular season game. Come back, get it all unloaded, get it clean, get it reorganized, and get it repacked, quickly turn it around for a, another trip somewhere across the country depending on where the national championship game is. You've got to plan for a national championship game 
before you play a semifinal game because the turnaround is so quick on that. So you're doing a site visit for the national championship game as well as the semifinal. You're having to get hotel lists, make sure all of your guys have bench passes for the game. Jerseys with Nike have to be made up and brought in and game patches, things like that. So there, there's a lot that goes into it, but uh, luckily we, we've had a lot of a lot of practice doing that, so I feel good about our process in that. All right. All right, so this is Coach Saban's Pyramid of Success, and he's used this everywhere he's coached. What we've got here is the season schedule for the year, and on every row, you'll see some sayings. If you do everything that's on those rows, when you get to the top, you'll be a champion. And what'll happen is the, the week of that game, that team's block will stay up in the team meeting room. Game day, it'll move, it'll be in the locker room on an easel. If we win the game, the block will go back, signed by the team, it'll go back up on the wall. Now, if we were to lose a game, I hang on to it, and it's just a hole in the wall. You can see on this wall starting in 2007, this is every win since Coach Saban has been here. So I've been here since 2011. Okay, so I want you to actually pick the block that's most memorable to you. Oh, uh, that's hard to say. There's been so many great games. I don't know if I can really pinpoint one. What about uh, from an equipment standpoint? I'll tell you what, usually it's the LSU games. Oh, okay. The LSU games on the equipment side of it. And I think their guys would kind of say the same thing. It's the most physical game, it seems like, every year. There's a lot of really great athletes. And looking at the, the number of players for each team in the NFL, it kind of kind of proves that. And it seems like every year when we get together, chin straps are breaking, uh, jerseys are getting ripped at a higher rate than, than any other game. So uh, I think every time when we go in, into the LSU game, it's kind of like, all right, well, everybody get ready for this one because they're out there just really hitting each other. As we go along, I'm seeing a lot of quotes and I just think of saving when I see this stuff, no excuses. This is everything that he's trying to put out. This is what he wants the players to see. And at the end of the day, everything goes back to a recruiting also. This is what he builds his program off of. This is kind of the same stuff, the discipline, effort, commitment, toughness, and the pride. Pitchers of former players, NFL, Heisman, White House pitcher right there. So just all the different levels of what makes this program up. So this is our new recruiting area. This has got all of the national championship trophies since Coach Saban has been here. A lot of the individual trophies that the players have won. The NFL wall, kind of a new way to display everything and kind of show everything off. This is the national championship trophy from last year's game against Georgia. We've got a little photo booth area. You just select a frame, you can pick anything. You can go through the little list. Got a little camera up here and you can have your picture taken with the trophy. And then you've got all the individual trophies here that the players have won. Doak Walker Awards, the Johnny United. When you look at this, what they've got here, and then you look at facilities we have as professional teams, you've been to Burnley's ground. <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, Jesus. Right? Been to where? Burnley. Burnley. Right? Burnley. <laughs> who, now are, who now are top of the championship. They're the top team in the championship looking to come into the Premier League next season. And you look at their facilities, what they have, and then you look at this as a college team and look at the difference. And don't tell me Burnley can't afford a £28 million facility like these have got. Right? In Could dollars. They? Probably buy players for 14 20 million, don't they? An average player now costs you between... An average championship player now will cost you between 10 and £20 million pounds to buy. I don't think... An average championship player. You would. Right? So the investment they need to put into these teams... I mean, you look at United, Manchester United... For them to go into a new stadium now, which they need, because it's, it's out of date and it's, it's finished, they'd need to spend at least a billion pounds to make that stadium work with facilities. Mm. That's just the stadium. But then but you look at, like, if you say, like, facilities as well, that comes down to current, like, the training room, which isn't yeah. next door traffic. Yeah, it's out of date as well. So they, they, they need something like this to be up to date. They need these kind of facilities. But one, the, the point I'm making here is the facilities they have at college football level, right? Mm compared to what we have at Premier League yeah, level. Yeah. There's only a select few teams that have these kind of facilities. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Very select. Now I know, don't get me wrong, I know college football is huge. Yeah. It's very, very big, I get that, I understand that. But they're giving that to college footballers. When you go to a pre professional Premier League football team, for example, they should be having facilities just as good as that. Yeah. And they don't. Oh, they're not getting like the money they're getting though, are they? Hmm? 
like you said, people put a lot of money into these sorts they of do. things. Yeah, a lot of people. No one's just putting investment. loads of money into well, they're Burnley. In, independently owned. That's why. Yeah. They're privately owned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas these, are, I don't know who owns them. They'd be college. It'd be state owned. I guess. Yeah. You know, people have to let me know on that. I'm, I'm just guessing. Mm. So, but yeah, it's it's amazing what they've got facility wise. You know. Crazy. Ninus. Water Camp trophies, Litnikovs are right here with the, the players listed and the year that they won them, where we have multiple guys who have won that trophy. Right, now here's the true bling right here. Yeah, yeah, so, so this is where all of them are. So these are all of the national championship rings, and they've added this little sliding magnifying glass so you can, you can slide to any ring and you can look at it under a magnifying glass and really get a, a close-up look at them. Now, oh. I don't, think, I don't think they're there to wear them. Yeah, they well, do, they I'll wear tell you them. something. Do you remember the guy? Yeah. I've said this on one of the previous videos. There used to be a guy that worked for a trucking company who used to come and see us as a sales rep when we lived in New, in New Jersey. Mm. And someone said to me, I said someone had been in, he went, oh, did he have his Super Bowl ring on? And I went, Super Bowl ring? He went, yeah, he's got a Super Bowl ring. And I went, no. I went, don't tell me in the city, he loves to show it off. And I went, I didn't even, meant, didn't even notice it. Right? So the next time you come in, he went, someone told me you got a Super Bowl ring. He went, yeah. He's got it on. <laughs> and I didn't even know he sat there like that. You know, like the whole game, like the whole time we were talking like that. You know, like rubbing his face and I was like, I didn't even notice it. And he told me he played for the Seattle um, Seahawks. Seahawks. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, he had a Super Bowl ring. But do you know the, um, do you know Barry? Kate and Barry? You know Barry? Yeah. He's got a, he's got a championship ring. Where from? He was the, uh, he, he works at the um, Carolina ice hockey team. The Panthers. Is it the pa- Carolina, Carolina Panthers, Panthers are they called? The football team. Yeah. What's the Carolina hockey team called? I can't remember. I'm not sure uh, about hockey. lightning. I'm not sure about hockey. Maybe the lightning. Some of the whatever they're called. He works there, and when they will need Stanley Cup, he got a ring. Stanley yeah, Cup ring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's got a Stanley Cup ring. Gonna, next time I see, I'm gonna try and get it. Off but him. what I'm saying is, they should make the ring a bit more. No, you got to have it like that. Less scary. You've got to have it proper like that. It's the biggest flex in the world. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it's in the Super Bowl. You want to like it on? He's like Mr. T, isn't it? That's what I mean. Pit fool. If I won a Super Bowl, right? If I won like six Super Bowl, I'd have one on every. I'd have them all on. Like, I'd be walking around like going, "Hey, like I'd a be proper ball. like, yeah." But I think most of the people probably keep it in a safe place at home. Yeah, but I think. Display. Do you remember when when Jason Bell? Oh, yeah. I think mm-hmm. it's Jason Bell that commentates on the on the uh, NFL over here. When the Super Bowl's on, I'm pretty sure when he does a commentary, he wears his Super Bowl ring. It's like if you win the, you know, I've I've seen Olympians walking down the street with the, they got the medal in the pocket. Yeah. And I've seen yeah. him and I said, what's that? Have you got your medal? And he went, I've got it here. Yeah. You can just take it out like that. And I'm like, wait, I'll put it on. <laughs> no, I understand Start wearing running. your medal and that sort of stuff. But yeah. I'm just saying those rings are gaudy, really. I'd wear, I'd definitely, if I won one, I'd definitely have one of them. Probably ask for a bigger wedding ring. Yeah. <laughs> I'd definitely have one of them, trust me. Over in this area, this is something we've never seen. Every program highlights their NFL players, but this is another level. So this is something new that they they just did where you've got the NFL helmet. You know, it's a full replica size helmet. And on the visor, though, it projects the name of the player, their position, and the year that they were drafted. And it just rolls through all those players. So instead of having a hard permanent place w- with their name on it, this is something that constantly is rolling through. It's just a very unique way to show everybody that's in the NFL. So in the weight room, the weight room is 37,000 square feet. There's 25,000 square feet on the floor where the racks are, squat racks, bench racks, and then 12,000 square feet on the second floor. We've got some cardio stuff, some offices up there. Down in the players' lounge, you've got a barber shop, the Bama Cuts area, lounge area for them, pool tables, video gaming systems set up in there. They've got massage chairs. All right, Jeff, I assume this is where the magic happens, day by day, what the fans don't see, right? Yeah, this is everything. This is where the team's getting work in Mm -hmm. every week during the season. So we got our three outdoor grass fields, which we're on every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday during the season. Thursday and Friday every week, the team will go inside our indoor facility, try and start backing off the players, kind of get in a controlled environment out of the heat or out of the cold, just depending on what time of the year it is. Definitely. Now, I want you to give me one word that describes Saban during a practice. 
Intense. Intense, for sure. Intense. <laughs> That's the one word right there. Well, Jeff, thank you for letting us come out and check out Alabama's facilities, man. Amazing, as I thought it would be. Oh, I appreciate it. Well, it's actually great to have y'all here. And for a special viewer out there, I'm going to put together a little package and get it to you. And I appreciate y'all being here. Nice road tie package, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome, awesome. Well, follow Koiski Media, C-O-I-S-K-I -I Media. It's a great video, that, and yeah. it's showcasing what they do. Mm -hmm. just got to, he does, uh, four fields. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Well, you look yeah. at if you look at comparisons, what we have at City, I think City have nine, is it, or 12? It's nine or 12. Yeah, but I know. But and like... what, they do, what they do on them fields, I don't know if you know this, but what they do on them fields, they make the grass the same as all the different Premier League teams. So if we if we they make the grass the same as Leicester's, for example, oh, really? or they make the grass the same as Norwich or Nottingham Forest, and some some of them got the same, so that's why they don't need a whole nineteen different fields. Mm. Some of them got the same sort of style, but they make the grass the same as what the different teams are to play against. So when they come to play against them at their stadium, they train on that grass. See, I didn't know that. Now you do. Something every and day. also we've got loads of pictures because we're playing with like under 21s, under 19s, yeah. under 17s, and mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's loads, women's there's loads team. of women's they have, team. They may have the same practice pitches where they've got like grass, AstroTurf, 4G, 3G maybe, you know, different types of indoor, they're not yeah. different things for, they're not with the roof on it because they're playing stadiums with it, they're not a roof, they've not got the, they've got the roof on it. He said that it was to keep them away from whatever the temperature is, they're yeah. cold or hot, yeah. Whatever, yeah. Mm -hmm. whatever time of the year is. Yeah. But that's absolutely great to see things like that because that's just for us. It just shows don't. you what you can't have. Yeah. 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 We don't have well, any we access to that. We, we have no access to that at any level of sport <laughs> in our careers. No. What we did in sport. Right? <laughs> Even when you join a gym over there, it's really high tech. Yeah. yeah. Compared to over here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Over here, you have to like pull your peg out, put it onto another thing for a weight. Oh, I'm sure how there, bad, yeah. how, how hard there is you, life? There you just go, beep, 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 beep. How hard is life? <laughs> Take <laughs> your peg out and put it to another weight. Oh, that's I hate that. that. Mate, All that's, I have a, to do that's a workout, there, that's a workout it, for me. It moves for me. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, say, speak your workout to the machine. Put it on sixty. Yeah, sound. <laughs> Not having to take the peg out. That's what, it'll, that's what it'll come to. Right? That's great. That to see that. We have to think of a, um, a college scene to follow. I know we've got. We've always said about the um, the West Virginia Mountaineers, didn't we? But they're not. They're not a serious team. Ali. We need to get a serious team. To Why watch. don't we choose? Should we choose a team, a college team? But right now. No, we'll have to think about it. People have to let us know in the comments. I have, to, I have to look through and do my yeah. research. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'll I mean, do my research. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I am leaning towards someone like uh, Alabama, Louisiana, but also like Ohio. I like Michigan. Well, you can't say I like <laughs> Ohio and Michigan. They, these are ones. I'm, these are ones I'm considering. I also, you know, when you talked about before that they sponsored Nike, sponsored them. You got to remember, um, Phil Knight went to Oregon, uh, un, uh, Oregon University. So Nike's kitted out. We'll do another video on Oregon. And what they've got because they've got the uh, okay. they've got all the back in. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to choose and I'm going to order a kit and then I'm going to wear it. Yeah. Every there day. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe, please. And we will catch you on the next one. Cheers. Bye. Cheers.